Now here we have a system where you have mass M which is strung up to two cords which in turn are attached to the walls and the strings are making an angle of A and angle B with the horizontal. Now what the problem says is that the entire system is stationary that is there's no movement and we are asked to find tension T1 and T2 in the strings. Now to solve this problem we have to make use of the fact that Newton's second law of motion says that net force is equal to the product of mass into the acceleration that it induces. And this is true for force acting in x direction or y direction. So we can say that the net force acting in x direction is equal to mass into acceleration in x direction. So we can see that in this case, since the system is not moving, if you sum up all the forces in the horizontal direction or x direction, it should equate to zero because acceleration is zero. So let's go ahead and write that this should equal zero. Likewise, all forces acting in y direction should also equal zero because the acceleration in the y direction is zero. If we write Fy or the sum of the forces in y direction or the net force in the y direction can be described as a product of mass into acceleration in y direction, acceleration in ay direction for this setup being zero should equal zero. Now, the problem therefore boils down to finding all forces which are acting in x direction, summing them up and equating them to zero. Likewise, finding all forces acting in y direction, summing them up and equating them to zero. So let's go ahead and find what are all the forces acting in x direction and what are all the forces acting in y direction. So we can see that tension T1 and T2 are pulling forces which are neutralizing the downward force of gravity acting on mass M. So we can see that we have angle B over here and pure geometry tells us that this should also be likewise, this should also be A. So one of the horizontal forces that I can see is T2 cos B. And let's go ahead and write one horizontal force is T2 cos B. And another horizontal force I can see is T1 cos A. But it's acting in opposite directions, we'll write it as negative. So minus T1 cos A. And for the sake of notation, let's also say that any force that acts in the right direction, we'll take it as positive or any vector acting in the right direction would be considered positive and any vector acting in left direction would be taken as negative. Likewise, any vector pointing in upward direction would be taken as positive and any vector acting in downward direction would be taken as negative. So getting back to this equation, we see that we've summed up all the forces acting in x direction and we can now equate this to zero because the system is stationary, acceleration is zero. And that's the reason this becomes zero and therefore we can equate it with zero. This equation gives us T2 is equal to T1 cos A upon cos B. Now, let's also sum up all the forces acting in vertical direction. So we can see there's one vertical force acting in upward direction, which is T2 sine B. And another force acting in upward direction is T1 sine A plus T1 sine A. And we can also see the force Mg acting in the downward direction. And since it is acting in downward direction, we'll take it as negative. So we have one more force over here, which is mg acting in downward direction. And since the system is stationary, the acceleration is zero, this component becomes zero, and therefore we can equate this with zero. Now, if we substitute the value of t2 in this equation, what we get is t1 into sine b cos a upon cos b plus sine a is equal to mg and therefore t1 is equal to mg divided by tan b cos a plus sine a and if you substitute the value of mass m angle a and angle b what you get is t1 
is equal to 10 into 9.8 times root 3 into root 3 upon 2 plus half and this gives value of t1 as 49 newtons and if we substitute the value of t1 in this equation what you get is t2 is equal to 85 newton so another observation you would have made is that i worked in symbols throughout i have not substituted the value of a or b or mass m early on in the derivation now the reason for this is that if i had put value of a b and m early on and if let's say i had wrongly put the value of a or b or m i would have got an answer in the end which would have been incorrect and i would have had to do the calculation again but with derivation of t1 in terms of symbols that is m a and b in case I've put the wrong value of A, I can quickly plug in the new value of A to get the value of T1. I don't have to recalculate the whole thing. Also, you can find the tension T1 or tension T2 for various situations. So the problem could have angle A as pi by 3 and angle B as pi by 6. And you can find what tension 1 or tension 2 would be in the system. Another good reason for working in symbols, and most professionals do it that way, most people who are really good in solving physics problems uh, work in symbols, is that when you get the end answer in terms of symbols, a lot of interesting interpretations you can make out of the derivation you get. And I've, I've done that in a couple of lessons, if you've noticed earlier, and we'll continue to do so in the problems we do and the lessons we undertake in future.